Hey, how y'all doing? This is Mongo Slade, and today we're going to talk about the final chapter, Seth Rollins versus Rey Mysterio. One final time. Okay? Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hit the like button. Also, subscribe, uh, unless you're already subscribed, in which case, thank you for being subscribed. Take the $1 challenge if you like what I do, and send me $1 via Cash App. Um, that is really the only way to support the show right now. Um, maybe I'll have a Patreon or something like that later. But at least for right now, please send me one dollar. Everybody who listens to this can send me one dollar. That would be that would be excellent. So uh, we get the match. No holds barred. Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins, and it was a banger. It was fantastic. It was it was a great match, and of course they they leaned very heavily on the story. Uh, you know, that they were, have been telling for these past five months. A lot of people have, were surprised that they had the blow off match on SmackDown, which I'm, I'm not really surprised that they, they did that. Now, the reason why I'm not surprised they had the blow off match on SmackDown is um, they, for starters, had the Bailey and Sasha Banks blow off match on SmackDown. I mean, this, they're also probably going to have the Randy Orton, Roman Reigns blow off match on Raw. So they're, they're sort of doing these things on TV because TV matters, okay? Um, there's also no way you can drag this feud to TLC. It's just, it does not have that much steam left. Even if you have, uh, uh, everybody thought Aaliyah was going to turn, even if they had done that, it would have burned out in two or three weeks. It, it could not last to TLC. It just couldn't, okay? Now, what they did, though, I, I did like it. I did like what they did. So the match takes place. You know, they do some pretty cool moves. Obviously, because Rey Mysterio is in it. Let me let me talk about Rey Mysterio for a minute. Rey Mysterio is fantastic. Rey Mysterio is a legend. Okay? When people talk about some of the greatest wrestlers of all time, they talk about Ric Flair. They talk about Shawn Michaels. They talk about Chris Jericho. We need to start talking about Rey Mysterio. You need to talk about Rey Mysterio. He has been doing this. For a long, long time. And he is one of the only people who say, especially from the WCW days, it was only like six guys from WCW who was, who was all, we didn't get a chance. We could have been top guys. That actually cemented it and was able to prove it. Ray, Eddie, Benoit. That was it. You know, as far as guys who were being held, quote unquote, held down in WCW. Well, well in Jericho. I forgot he was there for. <laughs> so four. Okay. That's that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, but and and what I mean held down, I mean not really being allowed to fight in upper echelons, you know. If they were to fight, because uh, re remember Benoit got matches against Ric Flair, he got matches against top guys, he got a lot of TV time, he even won the world title, but he wasn't considered a, a focal point of the show. Same thing with Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero had feuds with Ric Flair. He had a pretty good feud with Ric Flair. He just never did anything with him. You know, as far as moving him up the car. And if he did go against, you know, some top guy like, you know, Hall or Hogan or something like that, he probably just got squashed, which means that you're not a top guy. And that's exactly what happened to Rey Mysterio when he wrestled Kevin Nash. He got beaten like 10 seconds, which was bullshit. But then WWE did the same thing when he was a world champion. So who knows? But we need to start talking about Rey Mysterio as being one of the best ever. I'm talking like he is on that, that Ricky Steamboat level of being very good. Now, the difference is, of course, Ricky Steamboat wrestles a more traditional pro wrestling style. It's very fluid. Um, Steamboat was just made everything look effortless, especially now that I'm going back and watching some of his WCW stuff, too. Like, he didn't lose a beat. I have a, I have a conspiracy theory about Steamboat. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm going to say it here. Steamboat in 1992 or 1991, right? He said, I believe, in an interview, and he also said it on his documentary for WWE, that when he came back to WWE after his, you know, losing any kind of championship and all that type of stuff, he said he was told by the office that they were waiting for a main event spot to open, and he was going to get that main event spot, right? And then he said that he kept felt like he was being dragged and kicked along and that they were teasing him with this, with this, this main event spot. That was never coming. So he left. He asked for his release and he left and he went to WCW. And when he went to WCW, of course, he had these matches with Stunning Steve Austin and Rick Rude. It was great. But what happened after he left? That main event spot opened up. And guess who got it? Bret Hart. 
<laughs> Bret Hart got it. You know, y'all. He had it was another whole year, I think. I think because uh, Bret won the title in '92. Um, you also had Flair was also the champion in '91. You had Hogan and Savage and Sid and all those guys around the same time. Ricky Steamboat had just returned, I believe. And it seemed like if Steamboat had waited just a little bit longer, he might have gotten Bret Hart's spot. Maybe. Maybe. But I see Rey Mysterio on that level. I see him as good. And Lucha is Lucha is weird because it allows for a lot of mistakes. So it does make it seem like your stuff is not as fluid, is not as smooth. But young Rey Mysterio was so amazing. Just imagine if Steamboat had not hurt his back. If he could have waited to, to retire just a few years, we might have been able to get Steamboat and Rey Mysterio or something like that. That would have been badass, dog. Mysterio is on that tier, you know, and we need to start giving him his flowers. You know, and he's a better promo than, than uh, Ricky Steamboat. If you ever listen to Ricky Steamboat talk, man, it's not a good. It's, <laughs> it's not a good. Uh, it's not a good idea. I have never heard a good Ricky Steamboat promo, never. But I see Ricky Steamboat and Rey Mysterio both as sort of the saint archetype. We'll get into that some other time. But they're you know eternal baby faces. They can never be heels. Nobody will ever boo Ricky Steamboat. Nobody will ever boo. Rey Mysterio. Even though people booed Rey Mysterio before, they was just being assholes. It had nothing to do with Rey. It wasn't nothing because Rey did anything wrong. Even if Rey cheats, everybody still loves him, so it doesn't matter. Um, but in this match, we also need to talk about the greatness of Seth Rollins. Um, but um, I can postpone that because there's a lot more, you know. Matter of fact, let's not postpone it. Let's talk about how fantastic Seth Rollins has been because I heard that he's about to get written off TV. And that Survivor Series is probably going to be the end for him, which is also one of the reasons why they had this match tonight. Well, I shouldn't say tonight because I don't know when this video is going up on SmackDown. OK, uh, so it makes sense that they would. Uh, but Seth Rollins has been amazing. Like this whole uh, Messiah thing is he is not coming out and just cutting stilted promos anymore. His promos, some of them feel a little bit awkward, but then he has other ones that feel really good. Like where he really is feeling the character and acting out the archetype of the trickster, which is the archetype of uh, the, the, that uh, closely re resembles um, Seth Rollins. The trickster is a liar. He's a manipulator. He's a, you know, he's a puppet master. Um, and when you have with Rollins, he is sort of he's been the puppet master as far as you know him controlling Murphy and all that type of stuff, right? So they've been he's been doing really fantastic work, and of course he's a great in ring performer. But WWE has done a great job finding different things for Seth Rollins to say. And different. he's been doing a great job with his emotions, his facial expressions, and telling the story physically. And being the sawed-off bastard heel that somebody like Rey Mysterio needs. He has fit that perfectly. Now, to be quite honest, uh, Rey Mysterio always steps up when he gets these good summer feuds. Like he had that one with CM Punk. He had that one with Chris Jericho. This Seth Rollins thing is on that level, except for unlike those other feuds, this one went too long. That's the only problem I got. His Rey Mysterio and CM Punk is one of my favorite Rey Mysterio feuds. Rey Mysterio versus Chris Jericho is my favorite Rey Mysterio feud. You know, right under Eddie Guerrero. Let's let, let's just say right under Eddie Guerrero, yeah. Because Eddie Guerrero is probably number one. Because they have multiple incarnations of their feud. And I wouldn't put this feud with Rollins on that level, but they have been doing some of the similar things between, like, if you look at all of those guys, Punk, Jericho, Rollins, Guerrero, all three of them are essentially, if I was going to say the same archetype, they're the same archetype. They're all tricksters, magicians. Okay. And that works best for Ray, you know, as a, a character. Because he is a, an eternal good guy who cannot be manipulated and will not allow people to lie to him. You know, like he can't be taken advantage of or he, he's good for being taken advantage of, I should say, because he's so kind of naive, you know, like how Ray, you know, got into this whole feud with Seth Rollins because he was being nice. Right, right. Like he was in this whole feud with Seth Rollins because he congratulated him on you know on his baby and now then Rollins wanted him to die it made it just made absolutely no sense but you know that's just kind of how 
it makes sense to Ray. It makes sense for that to happen to somebody like Ray, you know, because nice things, nice people always had bad things happen to them for no reason. That's how, that's how you make them sympathetic. And that's really uh, one of the, the hallmarks of the Rey Mysterio is that he's always really good at getting sympathy because he's great at selling. He's great at selling, even with a mask on. Notice how people talk about folks with masks. They always want to take their mask off because they don't know how to emote with a mask on. I even saw a certain a certain uh, Lucha Libre uh, connoisseur uh, criticizing uh, certain WWE wrestlers who he also said they should push for not being able to emote with masks on. And you, you don't have that problem with Ray. Ray can emote with a mask on. Maybe because, you know, his eyes and mouth are still visible as opposed to other um, performers where their mouths are covered or their eyes are covered. It's, it's a lot more difficult. But because Ray can sell, and he doesn't matter. He doesn't mind taking those big bumps and all that type of stuff or doing cool things. He can still do cool things at 40, you know, 44 or something like that. He is now he can still do cool shit. So, you know, but this was badass. This match was very good, you know, but I forgot where I was when I was talking about the match. Was I talking about the match yet? Oh, no, <laughs> I didn't talk about the match. I was talking about the performers. So um, there was a cool, couple of cool spots. You know, the Tilted World DDT on the apron was absolutely insane. I don't like how Rollins was up like, you know, a couple minutes later, he was back up and doing stuff and not really selling that he got DDT on the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. I was told. Um, so Rollins takes the plastic, uh, plastic piece off of the, off of the, uh, t uh off of the chair. He's going to stab Ray Mysterio on his other eye because on top of being a trickster, he's a bloodthirsty maniac and having one eye taken out is not enough. He wants that other eye. You know, <laughs> this is, of course, I believe after, you know, yeah, he's so, yeah, he tried to stomp Ray on the stairs and he, he takes, he gets this, this chair piece and he's going to stab Ray in the eye with it. And Dominic gets in the ring to help. Obviously Dominic is dumb. He kicks Dominic and knocks Dominic over. Then, you know, he gets back into the ring and Murph comes to, you know, uh, you know, to help out. And Murph's going to help him. And then suddenly Murph attacks Rollins with, you know, and I think he kicked the chair or kneed the chair into his face or whatever. And, and then he scampered out of the ring and Rollins was livid. He was livid. And he ran after, you betrayed me. Like he had the veins in his neck. It was like, it was like, um, that scene from devil's advocate when he was, you know, at the end of the movie, he was like, no. Oh, he turned into the demon and then turned back into uh, Al Pacino. I just watched that movie recently. That's why I stuck in my head. Otherwise, I wouldn't have connected those two dots. Um, but he was, of course, in direct position for the 619. So then uh, the first 619 got miffed, got whiffed. It didn't go right. So Mysterio had to put him back in place. And then he did the 619. And then he pinned him with the frog splash. All is right with the world. Rey Mysterio has finally beaten Seth Rollins. And then we, they, the Mysterios have their family, their family huddle. And they're like, what are we going to do with this guy? And, and, and Murph is on the ring apron looking like, uh oh, now what? And Ray's like, get in the ring. Face me like a man. Get in the ring. So Murph gets in the ring and Ray offers him his hand and he shakes his hand and he shakes hands with Dominic and Angie gives him a hug. And I'm like, Murph Mysterio is born. Get this man a mask. Get him a mask, man. He's he's Murph Mysterio. We might as well give. You should have just had Seth Rollins and Randy, Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio in a custody for Murphy match. That's what this was. This was uh, the custody of Murphy's soul on a pole match. Soul in a briefcase above the ring. That's what they really should have just did. Murphy's soul is in a briefcase and hanging above the ring. That's pretty much what this match was. And Murphy chose the Mysterios over. But this thing is not over, obviously. Afterwards, uh, in, after the Mysterios shake hands and they all love Murph, they forgive Murph, which is what I said they were going to do. I said they were going to end up forgiving them. It's a Catholic thing to do. That's just a human thing. You know, Catholics are really into forgiveness. They forgave Murph for all his evil deeds because he helped them win in the end. But Rollins, on the other hand, is furious. 
He chased down Adam Pierce because everybody's mad at Adam Pierce. And he, he demanded to, the opportunity to destroy Murphy next week on SmackDown. And I'm okay with that. I just want them to put some type of gimmick on it. You know, it can't just be one on one. It should be like a cage match or something. All right. Like, or, yeah, a cage match or something like that to keep the Mysterios out and give. Um, but, you know, what do you do? Maybe. I don't really think that Murph should lose, though. Murph should win that match, right? I mean, that's what we're thinking, right? Murph should win that match. Therefore, but what do you do? Because Rollins is wrestling at Survivor Series. Murph is not. At least, at least I don't believe he is. But we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. Anyway, Murph Rollins in the final match apparently of this uh, feud, this six month feud. It feels like, and it's been good. You know, I, I, I'm I'm good with the Mysterios forgiving Murph. It's been a while, you know, and <laughs> and you know, Aaliyah loves Murph, and that love love wins, love wins. Murph's soul is not completely black. It is. It is good. He's a good man. So um, that's that's it, man. Uh, thank you guys for listening. My voice is tired. I'm, my mouth is dry. But um, thank you guys for listening. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. And um, I appreciate your time.